So, you just wanted a quick rundown on the base code from last video. Not a problem. The AnyFax class is just the information that the user types in here. If you look back, you can see that each animation has a checkbox for neutral, a name, an end, what comes after it, and a transition speed. Exactly the way we've set it up. And then you have the actual script that performs the animation. In it, these two variables work together to help you get the exact frames in your animation. B frame is just the adjuster to calculate the frame rate from Blender. And the result allows us to track frame by frame where our animations are at all times. So if you were doing a fighting animation and you wanted the hitboxes to appear on frames 25 and 32, you could easily tell the hitboxes when to appear using this number. Anycon ref just references our animator, which houses our avatar and our controller. Current animation and frame keep track of which animation is playing and how far into it we are. Actions is just a collection of all your animations. We had three actions, but you could have as many as you wanted. In the start, we set idle animation and set the play speed to one. If your game had slow motion features, this would be the number you want to control. The change method is the one that you call from other scripts anytime you want to trigger another animation. The first number tells the animation to change to, the second determines how fast it changes. In the last video, we mapped this method to the up arrow and Y buttons to trigger walking and attacking. The final method here runs the animation. It's normally run from the update method, and everything down here just basically says if the current frame reaches the last frame in the animation, transition to the next one that comes after. Unless the animation is set to negative one, which you might remember is our term for loop and animation. Also, if you would like to see what the code looks like using time.delta time, a very fantastic man by the name of Mason Wheeler from Stormhunter Studios has very kindly outlined the changes that you would need to make to implement it. As you all know, I'm still working on incorporating time.delta time into my own workflow, and his take on this code is really helping me shift my technique towards that direction. I'd also like to give one more shout out to Sayuri Artsy of Eager Passion for providing the core code that allowed me to figure this stuff out in the first place. So again, thank you to everyone for your support, and that concludes the basic Blend Edit Unity export series. I am currently waiting for some mocap stuff to arrive in the mail, and as soon as those parts arrive, we are gonna finish the Blender Animation Tutorial series with motion capture. So I hope you look forward to that. As always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.